Here's another one for my anti-COVID fans. You know, when you guys complain and you kind of go off, <laughs> that means I do more of them. So here's one from uh, a couple of weeks ago. This is from the Scientific American, which is normally a peer-reviewed journal. So take it for what you will. It's not uh, a, a rag. It's not a newspaper. This is a scientific journal. Debunking the false claim that COVID deaths counts are inflated. President Trump, a congressman, and a conspiracy fantasist have repeated the myth. But three kinds of evidence point to more than 218,000 U.S. deaths. We're now over 230,000. That was a couple of weeks ago. A persistent falsehood has been circulating on social media. The number of COVID deaths is much lower than the official statistic of more than 218,000. And therefore, the danger of the disease has been overblown. In August, President Trump retweeted a post claiming that only 6% of the reported deaths were actually from COVID-19. The tweet originated from a follower of the debunked conspiracy fantasy, Canon. Twitter removed the post for containing false information, but fabrications such as these continued to spread. U.S. Representative Roger Marshall of Kansas complained in September that Facebook had removed a post in which he claimed that 94% of COVID deaths reported by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention were the result of two to three additional serious illnesses and were of advanced age. Now some facts. Researchers know beyond a doubt that the number of COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. have surpassed 200,000. These numbers are supported by three lines of evidence, including death certificates. The inaccurate idea that only 6% of deaths were really caused by coronavirus is a gross misinterpretation of how death certificates work, say Robert Anderson, lead mortality statistician at the CDC's National Center for Health Statistics. The scope of the coronavirus's deadly toll is clear, even if the final numbers will not be known until the pandemic is over. We're pretty confident about the scale and order of magnitude of deaths, but we're not clear on the exact number yet, says Justin Lessler. An infectious disease epidemiologist at the John Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. To understand why the figures contain some uncertainty, it is important to know how they were collected and calculated. The first source of death data is called case surveillance. Healthcare providers are required to report cases and deaths from certain diseases, including measles, mumps, and now COVID-19, to their state's health department, which in turn passes this information along to the CDC. Anderson says, the surveillance data are a kind of quick and dirty accounting. Shwana Webster, executive director of the National Association for Public Health Statistics and Information Systems. The state gathers all the information they can on these diseases, but this is the first pass of the accounting. No one has time to double check the information or look for missing lab tests, she says. For that, you have to look for the next source of information, vital records. The second line of evidence comes from the National Vital Statistics System, which records births and death certificates. When somebody dies, a death certificate is filed in the state where the death occurred. And after the records are registered at a state level, they are sent to the National Center for Health Statistics, which tracks deaths at a national level. Death certificates are not filed in the system until outstanding test results are in, and the information is as complete as possible. By the time a record gets into the vital record system, it is as close to perfect as it's going to get, Webster says. A physician, a medical examiner, or a coroner fills out the cause of mortality on the death certificate, and they are instructed to include only the conditions that caused or contributed to death, Anderson says. One field lists the sequence of events leading to the death. What we're really trying to get at is the condition or disease that started the chain of events leading to the death. Anderson says, for COVID-19, that might be something like acute respiratory distress due to pneumonia due to COVID-19. A second part of the certificate lists other significant conditions that may have contributed to the death yet were not part of the sequence of events that led up to it, he says. These are called comorbidities. While they can be Contributing factors that cannot be directly involved in the chain of cause and effect that ended in death. Pre-existing medical conditions such as diabetes or heart disease are common comorbidities. They can make a person more vulnerable to the coronavirus, Anderson says, but the fact is they're not dying from that pre-existing condition. 
When we ask if COVID killed somebody, it means did they die sooner than they would have if they didn't have the virus, Lesler says. Even such a person with a potentially life-shortening pre-existing condition, such as heart disease or diabetes, may have lived another five, ten, or more, or many more years had they not become infected with COVID-19. The six percent number touted by Trump at Canaan comes from a weekly CDC report stating that in 6% of the coronavirus mortality cases it counted, COVID-19 was the only condition listed on the death certificate. That observation likely means that those death certificates were incomplete because the certifiers only gave the underlying cause of death and not the full causal sequence that led to it, Anderson says. Even someone who does not have a pre-existing condition and dies from COVID-19 will also have core morbidities in the form of symptoms, such as respiratory failure caused by coronavirus. The idea that a death certificate will, with ailments listed in addition to COVID-19, means that the person will not really die from the virus is simply false, Anderson says. The surveillance and vital statistic data provide a pretty good picture of how many deaths are attributable to the coronavirus, but they do not capture all of them. And that is where the final line of evidence comes in, excess death. They are the number of deaths that occur above and beyond the historical pattern for that time period, says Stephen Wolf, a physician and population health researcher at the Virginia Commonwealth University School of Medicine. In a paper published in the Journal of American Medical Association, this month, Wolf and his colleagues examined death records in the U.S. from March 1st through August 1st and compared them with the expected mortality numbers. They found that there was a 20% increase in deaths during the same time period for a total of 225,530 excess deaths compared with previous years. I actually did videos on this because the New York Times does post this like every week or every other week on Sunday. So does the... um, Economist. The Economist also has published uh, excess deaths in uh, Europe and other places. And this is a phenomenon that's all over the world, not just in the United States. So for people to say that it's just a fabricated story by the media, it's uh, bullshit because you nobody can control 200 countries' media or their governments or their health statistics. And if they if they do have that level of control, then uh, you can't do anything about it, okay? If people have that level of control to control the whole globe, uh, your little tiny ass is not going to uh, make a dent in it. Continuing, two-thirds of these cases were attributed to COVID-19 on the death certificates. And Wolf says there are two types of explanation for the rest. Some of them were COVID-19 deaths that were simply not documented as such. Perhaps because the person died at home and was never tested, or because the certificate was miscoded. And some of these extra deaths were probably a consequence of the pandemic, yet not necessarily the virus itself. For instance, he says, imagine a patient with chest pain who is scared to go to the hospital because they do not want to get the virus and then dies of a heart attack. Wolf calls it indirect mortality. The deaths aren't literally caused by the virus itself, but the pandemic is claiming lives, he says. The numbers in Wolf's study come from provisional death data, the kind that the CDC has not yet checked for miscoding and other issues. So it comes with a degree of imprecision. What builds his confidence in these results, however, is the fact that they have been replicated numerous times by his group and others. All serious analysis of these data are showing that the number of deaths we're hearing in, on the news is an undercount, he says. COVID-19 is now the third leading cause of death in the United States, where their deaths add up to 218,000, 219,000, or 220,000, as reported by the CDC. John Hopkins University and New York Times, respectively, on October 19th. It's a staggering number of lives cut short. And that is the end of the article. You know what? I keep hearing these naysayers. They've been naysayers since February, since January, really. And this is November, almost a year later, and they continue to be wrong because they don't have any evidence to the contrary. 
Uh, but hell, these people also believe the earth is flat with no evidence to the, you know, with no evidence to the contrary that the earth is round. Okay. So, uh, all I can say is read them and weep. But the thing is, nobody can make you stay in the house. Nobody can make you not go out and earn a living. You know, if there's a way to earn a living, you'll find it. Basically, your society does have control of, of crowd gatherings and stuff like that and and uh, your local restaurants and stuff like that. They, but for the most part, if you really want something, you can get it. If you really want to go out, you can get it. I, I'm living in Los Angeles and Los Angeles is fairly strict about their lockdowns. But the thing is, people still go out. People still eat. People still party. I was just looking at the Halloween parties uh, last night and people still roam. So people are not caged in like animals. It's not a uh, authoritarian lockdown like China. People are fairly free, which causes the disease to spread. So people have gone on planes, gone on trips, taken the chances to go other places. My mother just got back from a trip. So it is what it is. People still gather. So people act like this is uh, so harsh. You know, uh, your government is doing this due diligence, whether you believe it or not. Now, the government cannot control 330 million people. If 330 million people want to gather and do something, they're going to gather and do something. Nobody can make you do anything. So this crap I hear from these naysayers, like like they're being oppressed and they're not. I have in, in 10 months, you know, I... I in almost 10 months, in, in, in nine months, I have not heard of an alternative theory, why there is a pandemic, what they're doing, uh, why they're faking it. Uh, the, the only thing I hear is they're trying to make you take a vaccine, okay, because they want to make money, okay? <laughs> the United States has spent over $10 trillion in this crisis, okay? The maximum amount of money they can make from a vaccine is of 2 or $3 billion, okay, this, which is, doesn't compare. The billionaires have had made more money during the crisis from the government dumping money into it than they could have from a vaccine. It has cost the United States more money and the world more money in six months than a vaccine can make in the next 50 years. So those numbers do not add up. So when you come up with a reason and come up with a cause, even though I could, I could come up with a conspiracy theory that is the reason why this could happen. But I'm not going to give you guys any ammo. I'm not going to do the work for you. You guys have to figure it out. But nobody I've heard uh, from the conspiracy side has even come up with the with the most plausible answer because they can't because they don't know what they're talking about. Anyway, I'm going to make this short. The, this read them and weep. This is not coming from what you call the fake news rag. This is the Scientific American and they do give stats and data and this is something that the people in Europe have been doing the same thing. Uh, people say, I haven't seen bodies. Hey, why don't you try going down to the morgue if they let you in and see it? Because you don't, when there's cancer or flu deaths, I don't see you guys rolling down to the uh, to the morgue trying to see who died of the flu. I don't see you guys going down to see who dies of pneumonia. In fact, I, you know, they actually talk to doctors and maybe I'll actually see if I can find the article. Most doctors say they have never seen anybody die of the flu. Most doctors have said they have never seen anybody die of the flu. That's how rare flu deaths actually are. Even though there's, there's like 20 to 30,000 of people that die from the flu every year, but it's an estimate. It's estimated. That's how come they don't give you the, um, the numbers to the end of the year. They give you a range because the CDC estimates flu deaths by the amount of infections that, that are reported. And even those are estimated as comparison to the yearly data. COVID-19 has to have a test before it can go down on a death certificate. It cannot be estimated. It's got to have a test. Otherwise, the CDC will toss it out, which they have just said. A lot of uh, body people that have died uh, don't have it on their death certificate because there is no test. In fact, COVID-19 is one of the most over-tested diseases I've ever seen. These are the most, this is the most over-tested uh, ailment I've seen, and there's got to be a damn good reason for it. So when they say 230,000 people have died of COVID-19, that means those people had COVID-19. Now, you can say whether it was the cause of death or not. There's no way to be known because you can't go back over 219,000 or 230,000 people's death certificate. 
Now, if you got people on the inside uh, that have looked at all these, you know, by all means, post the article. But also post the proof that goes along with it. Anyway, that's all I got. This is BGSI, and I'll see you.